Hi everybody, I'm Jess D'Artagnan Love and welcome to my channel where I talk about my favorite things. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central Time, I talk about planning, organizing, and goal setting. Every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time, I talk about books and coffee. Today we're talking about books, specifically this book, If I Stay by Gail Foreman. So this is a book that interests you. Grab your coffee and let's dive right in. Mm-hmm. So what coffee are you drinking today? I am drinking, and I should also mention this is not a sponsored video. I just love talking about coffee and books. Um, the coffee that I'm drinking is Dunkin' Donuts Caramel Coffee Cake. And I like this because it's got a hint of sweetness, but it's not overwhelmingly sweet. It's still got that really good, bitter coffee taste to it. So that's what I'm drinking this morning. Please recommend to me some of your favorite coffees down below. I do really want to try more independent roasters and specialty coffee companies. So put your recommendations down below for me to try them in other videos. And I do have a goal of someday roasting my own coffees. Um, that's pretty far down the line yet. So let's talk about If I Stay. Again, here's the book. This is a book that was published originally in 2009 and then they did create a film adaptation. And so the book that I am reading is the movie tie-in edition that came out in 2014 after the film was released. And this happens pretty regularly with books that are then made into films is that they'll create a movie edition of the book and re-release it after the film has come out because typically sales go up. So that's the edition that I read. I got it from my local library and I didn't pick the movie tie-in for any particular reason other than that was the <laughs> that was the edition available at the library. I was recommended this book by a student so that is why I chose to read it. So this book was written by a writer named Gail Foreman and so just a little bit about Gail. Maybe, if I can find my notes. <laughs> okay. So, Gail does have a website, gailforman.com, and I'll link that down below if you want to check out the website. And um, all the information I got about her, I pulled directly from her bio on that website. So, she um, has always been a writer. And her original writing job was for Seventeen Magazine, which really, um, I think, tells you a lot about the kind of writing she enjoys doing. She loves to write YA. Um, she's really into that genre in general. And so Seventeen Magazine was a perfect starting point for her because that's the same audience, essentially. Um, she loves to travel. She's actually been to 64 countries. Wow. <laughs> Um, her favorite place to visit so far has been India. Color me jealous. I really want to see India. Um, and as a teenager herself, she was obsessed with Molly Ringwald. And she actually credits Molly Ringwald for becoming a YA author, which I think is really cool. I love Molly Ringwald as well and all the John Hughes flicks. Um, she has an interesting quote that is actually the very first thing that you read when you go to her bio page. She says, I am a woman. There seems to be some confusion about my gender, which I find disturbing if you have seen my author photo. When I was reading Gail's bio, I tended to get the sense that she's had some bad experiences with her fans. Um, some of the little things that she wrote in her bio it just seemed really standoffish to me and honestly if I had bad experiences with fans I would probably be the same way so that's unfortunate um, you never want to see an author like be abused by her public um, but yeah so definitely check out her website if you're interested in her work. She has written a lot more than just If I Stay, so the body of her work is available on that website. I will also link down below um, how you can purchase If I Stay. It does come in different formats, including ebook format. So the cover art for the book, particularly for the version that I read, um, it 
is the movie tie-in version. So it has little snapshots of different scenes from the film. I'm kind of indifferent to the cover art because it's not the original cover art, so I can't really speak to the original. But what I did like about this particular version of cover art was the way they used the boxes. And I think that the boxes kind of highlight the narrative structure of the book pretty well. Um, and those are really my only thoughts about the cover art. Um, just because of this reprint edition, I can't say much about the initial cover art. So let's do the synopsis again. I'll just read to you the dust jacket. Ooh, camera wiggling. Sorry, cat just bumped into my tripod. <laughs> okay, so in an instant, Mia's world is shattered, leaving her with only questions. What will happen if she leaves? If she loves? If she stays? Heartbreaking, romantic, and ultimately filled with hope, this is a powerful story of love and loss and finding the courage to make the right decision when your life is literally in your hands. So that doesn't tell you a whole lot. <laughs> um, the basic synopsis of this story is that uh, Mia, the protagonist, and her family, they are in a very severe car accident. And she is left in a coma and finds herself outside of her body, able to see everything that goes on around her, um, as if she was conscious and living, but you know, obviously she's having that out of body experience. And through this process, she discovers that it's truly up to her whether or not she stays, meaning whether or not she lives or if she crosses over um, to the other side, what that other side is, it doesn't really go into detail about that too much. So. My thoughts on this book, um, I really enjoyed reading it. I actually read it cover to cover in a single Sunday. <laughs> I just, just sat down and that's all I did was read this book because I couldn't put it down. And in part, this was because of the pacing. So Gail Foreman is a master of pacing. The way the book is structured is you have the present tense storyline and then she flashes back to different stories throughout her life that kind of led up to that moment. Um, and that is in informing whether or not she decides to stay. And what I loved about the pacing was that the tension remained really high. There was just enough in each section to keep it interesting and to move the plot forward, but it wasn't like um, you were losing the tension from the present tense timeline. So that was brilliant and that was the main reason why I just couldn't put this book down because it just kept moving. Like the pace was amazing. At the start of the book, I felt like the description of Mia's family was a little bit too idyllic, like a little bit too perfect to really be believable, and I was tempted to put the book down because I was, nobody's family is that perfect. Um, but I'm glad that I didn't because as I kept reading, you really get a sense of why the family is painted that way in the very beginning and that there is a lot of genuine love within her family. Um, and the family certainly isn't perfect, but there really is just this beautiful structure of love and support. And it, it makes the story all that more gut-wrenching as you read along. So if you're annoyed by that when you first start reading, don't give up on it just because of that. I would say keep going because that that sense of, oh, this family's so perfect. I mean, um, you'll see more depth. Um, it won't seem so surface level peachy keen as, as you go along. So definitely stick with it. Um, the car accident scene. Okay, let's talk about that. That scene was incredibly graphic and if you have ever been in a severe car accident or have lost someone in a severe car accident, I recommend you not read this book just because of that alone. I have lost a handful of people um, to vehicle accidents and reading that was very triggering. Um, it made me so uncomfortable. It made me a little queasy. It took me back to those moments when I was thinking about my own loved ones who had died in these accidents and just the horrifying experience it must have been to die in that way. 
So if you have lost someone or if you've experienced a car accident, don't read this. Don't put yourself through that. Um, or if you do read it, just skip over that part where they're describing the actual accident scene. It's so real and it's so gritty and gruesome um, that I think it would be really, really triggering for someone who has experienced this in their own life. Um, Mia is a musician, the protagonist, she's a musician, and something that I loved was the way that Gail Foreman described the cello as almost a living, breathing human thing. Um, she calls it human and expressive, and it just really sends home, you know, how much Mia loves cello and how important that music is in her life. Alright, so my last thought about this, um, the actual story was the ending and I'm not gonna give it away so don't panic I'm not gonna have any spoilers but I feel like there was a real opportunity missed at the end of this book there was such an opening there to make a profound statement about love about loss life death and if you imagine a basketball player throwing an air ball, that's kind of how it felt to me. Like that opportunity was just missed. There was some discussion about, oh, life is full of possibilities, but there could have been so much more and it could have been so much more profound. Um, so that was a little disappointing. In all, I wasn't disappointed in the ending. Like I, I liked the way it ended. I just wanted more. I wanted more depth and I wanted more questioning and exploration. And I have to keep in mind the age group. I mean, it is possible that maybe when she wrote it, she did have that in there and it was edited out to make it more applicable or palatable for that specific YA age group. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's my thought on the, on the ending. So word bank. There aren't as many words as in my last review of Lainey Taylor's Daughter and Smoke and Bone. I'll put a link to that up here. There are a lot of words in that book. Um, the writing in this book was fairly simplistic. Um, again, I think to meet the needs of her audience. So the word bank that I have for If I Stay is churlish, foundling, gauche, hawk, trawl, and verve. And the definitions to those words, if you're interested in learning them, are linked down below on my blog post for the book. So would I read this book again? That's the question I like to ask myself when I'm gauging quality. Maybe, maybe I would read it again. Um, this is a very plot driven book, meaning you read it because you wanna know what happens. And then after you know what happens, there's just not really much there to want to go back and reread, at least for me. Um, the actual prose itself is very simplistic, and I'm not saying that that's bad. Um, it's very straightforward, it's clear, it's to the point, because this book isn't meant to be a work of amazing prose. It's meant to tell a story, and it definitely accomplishes that person, or that purpose, person. Um, but once the story is told, then you know it. You know, there's not really a reason to go back and revisit it. So maybe I would read this again. I think that maybe um, what I would do is reread it before watching the movie because I do plan on watching this film to see how it was adapted to film. But I think that would be the only reason why is to be able to compare the book to the film so that the book is fresh when I watch the film. Otherwise, and, and this... You know, I'm not saying this because it's a bad book, because it's not a bad book. I definitely am glad that I read it, but I probably wouldn't read it again. So, there's that. <laughs> um, the discussion question that I feel like is so obvious and that I have to ask based on this story is would you stay? If you are in Mia's position, would you stay? So if you've read the book, if you know the story, if you've seen the movie even, comment down below, tell me, would you stay? My answer to this is yes, absolutely, I would stay. I always say yes to life. Um, so yes, and then I realized that I didn't answer the discussion question from the Lainey Taylor review that I did. Again, I'll link that review up here. 
Um, but the discussion question from the Lainey Taylor review of Daughter and Smoke and Bone was where do you feel most, most at home? And for me, I feel most at home in Iowa, which is where I live now, and in New York City. So those are the answers to my discussion questions. I really want to know what your answers are. So make sure to comment down below. Um, would you stay if you were in Mia's position? All right, that's it for this video. If you have read If I Stay by Gail Foreman, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. I really want to know um, what you think and what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you want to know when I post more book reviews, make sure to subscribe. I'll put a link up here to subscribe. And then when you subscribe, hit the bell down below because then that will also alert you when I post new content. Um, I did, where to go? Book, where'd my book go? There it is, okay. I did also read this book recently. It's called The Inner Coast of an Ancient Sea, Poems by Mary Logan Sweet, but I'm not going to review it because you can't find it anywhere. This was self-published and I tried to find, you know, where people could buy copies of it. There's nowhere you can buy copies of it. I found this in the library. It was a fluke that I found it, I guess. It was an amazing book, but if you can't buy it, then there's no sense in me reviewing it. But yes, I did read this one as well. All right, that's it for this video. So I will see you in my next video. And in the meantime, read good books and drink good coffee. Bye.